When you look at a report, it's helpful to know when the data for that report has been last refreshed so that you don't make any decisions on outdated data. Now, you might think it's easy, just put a timestamp on a report page and that's it. However, creating that timestamp is quite tricky because of two reasons. Now, reason number one is that when you publish a report to Power BI service, well, Power BI service works with UTC time and you might want to show the local refresh time. And reason number two is that, well, our workaround needs to take into consideration summertime and wintertime. Now, in this video, I show you how to create the ultimate timestamp that shows you the last refresh date. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now let's get started straight away and dive into Power Query. Now here we want to build a new blank query. So let's go here to New Source, Blank Query. And now we want to return the current date and time, which you can do with the following function, date time .local now. let's select it and then have an opening bracket, closing bracket, press enter, and you see it returns the current date and the current time right after that, okay? Now, the next step is to turn this into a table so that we can load it later on to our data model. So let's click here on to table. Now you see it's a table. And the next thing that we wanna do is rename that column and let's rename it to timestamp, okay? Then let's also update the data type to a date and time. All right, so that looks good. Now the next thing that I wanna do is rename the query and let's also call this one timestamp. And now we load it to our data model. So let's click on close and apply. And now we can visualize that timestamp. Now how you do it, that's up to you. Let's for this example, go for a card visual. So let's select the card and go here to the timestamp table, take the timestamp and add it to it. Now let's then also resize the card visual so that it nicely fits. And instead of having here earliest timestamp, we can rename it to last refresh. Okay, so that looks good. Now we are ready to run a refresh and see if our timestamp updates. So over here we go to the top, click on home, refresh. And now you see it nicely updated the date and the time. Now that worked perfectly. And you might think that's it. However, what happens when we publish a report and run a refresh from Power BI service? Now let's see. So I'm going to click on publish and here in Power BI service, it looks still the same, but now we're going to run the refresh. So let's go over here to our workspace, go to the data set for a report, refresh it. All right, so now it runs the refresh. Let's go back to our report. And now you see the time changed to one hour earlier. And that is because Power BI service works with UTC time. And it shows now UTC time instead of the local time on my laptop, which is now six o'clock. Okay, so what now? How can we make sure that the refresh time also in Power BI service shows the local time? Now, let's fix this. Let's go back to Power BI desktop. Now the step that we are going to change is the source step. So here we use the function datetime local now. Now this works when you're on Power BI desktop, but doesn't work in Power BI service. So instead of that, we're going to replace this with first of all, the UTC time, okay? And then we're going to shift it to our time zone. Now to return the UTC time, we can replace this function over here with datetime zone and then UTC now. Okay, so this one over here. All right, and let's open and close the brackets, press enter, and this is the current UTC time. Okay, so now that we have the UTC time, we wanna shift this time to an earlier time or a later time. And we can do that with the following function. So let's go back over here and use the function date time zone. And over here, we can use then the switch zone function. So switch zone. Over here, first of all, you have the date and time zone. That's over here. And then how many hours we want to move. All right, so let's go here and say plus two or plus one, depending on uh, which time zone you are. And then how many minutes? Let's go for a zero. All right, so now over here is four past six and it's the 5th of November. Okay, so now I have my local time and then there's another step that we need to update, 
which is here under change type. And instead of having here date time, you need to have date time time zone. Otherwise it's not gonna work. So let's replace this one. Go to home, close and apply. And now again, we're going to publish it to Power BI service. All right, so it refreshed. Now let's go back to our report. And over here you see it nicely updated and it shows the local time on my laptop. All right, so now it is working and it's not showing the refresh time anymore in UTC time. However, then we have another problem and that is what about summertime and winter time? Because now I'm moving plus one hour from the UTC time. And this might be different in the summer because then here in Europe, it's plus two. So how can we deal with summer and winter time? Now that's the next thing that we're going to solve. Now, first of all, we need to figure out how we can actually find the date on which we change from summertime to winter time for the current year. So to show you how that works, we can insert a new blank query. Now, first of all, we need to find a way to return the current year that we are in. Okay, so let's return the current time. So date dot local now. Okay, so now we have the current date and time. And from this, we want to extract the year, which we can do with the next function, which is called date.year. And this is going to extract the year from this. So this is the current year. Now here on the applied steps, you cannot just rename this one, the, the source tab. Now as a workaround, just go to view, advanced editor. And then from here, instead of source, I'm going to call this one current year. And then we also need to return that. Now the next step depends on whether you are in Europe or US. Now here in Europe, where I am, we change to summertime on the last Sunday of March. So I'm gonna show you that one first and then how it works for the US. Now, we first are going to return the 31st of March. So let's insert a new step. And over here, we can now return a date, which you can do as follows. Pound symbol, date, bracket open, and then first the year. So here you can either say 2021 or because we already have a variable there for uh, the current year, I can just refer to current year. Then which month? Well, month number three. And then which day? 31. Okay, now this returns the 31st of March, 21. So now that we have this, we want to return the last Sunday in March. Now, how can we use this date to find the last Sunday? Well, we can do that with the following function, which is called date dot, and then start of week. All right. Now over here, the date and time we already have here. And then we want to go to the first Sunday. So here we can say, as a starting day for our week, we use the Sunday. All right. And now let's close that date start of week function. And you see it returns the first Sunday before. Now let's double check if this works. So here in Wikipedia, you see it's the 28th of March. And if I type in 22 or 23, you see it should go one day down. So let's go back and try this out. So instead of the current year, 22, so here for 22, you see it returns the 27th and then for 23, the 26th. All right, now how does this work for the US? Well, if you want to find the second Sunday of March, you would have to type in the following. So first of all, we have here the current year, then we have March, and then instead of 31 over here, we can type in 14, all right? Now here, the last Sunday is, well, also the 14th. Now let's see if this is true. I'm going to go back to Wikipedia. Now we look here for the US dates and you see it starts in 21 on the 14th and then 22 on the 13th. So let me try this out. I put in 22 and you see this always works. Now, why? Now imagine the most extreme scenario where the 1st of March is a Sunday, then the 1st of March is a Sunday, then the 8th of March is a Sunday, then the third Sunday would be on the 15th. So if you take 14 and you say, go to the beginning of the week, and the beginning of the week is a Sunday, then uh, you will always find the second one. Okay, so now I'm just going to change back to the European settings. So over here we have current year, month three for March, and then 
over here the 31st for the end of March. Now for winter time, this would work in exactly the same way. So here in Europe, we change to winter time on the very last Sunday in October. Okay, so we would just have to update these numbers here. All right, now in this query, I'm calculating the current year in a separate step. And actually I want to have it as one step. So I'm just going to copy that and then go back and then replace over here the current year with what we wrote before. I see still works now. So this formula returns the date on which we switch to summertime. So I'm going to copy that. And now I'm going to go back over here to our timestamp. And here we are going to add this calculation in a new step, in a new variable in which we store basically that date. And the same for winter time. Now to add it here on the right hand side, uh, you can insert a new step or simply go to view, advanced editor, and over here, we're going to have two variables, one for the summertime, summertime. And here we just copy in the formula. Don't forget the comma in the end. And then we can do the same thing for winter time. So I just copy this, paste it in here. Now over here we have winter time. And here we want to change the three to a 10 and we want to have the last date of October. Now for the US, instead of having here 10 and 31, you would have 10 and 14. Okay, so now that we have these two variables, let's click on done. All right, and then here instead of source, well, that is going to be our timestamp. So I'm going to rename this step to timestamp. Okay, so now that we found a way to return the date on which we switch to summertime or winter time, how can we use it? Well, let's go here to the timestamp step. And here we hard coded the plus one. Now, sometimes it's plus one and sometimes it's plus two, dependent on whether we are in summertime or wintertime. So that number I want to make variable. Now to do that, we have to compare the current data time to the dates when we switch to summer or winter time. Now let's insert a new step right before a timestamp. And here we can return the current date and time. So date time zone. And then we want to have UTC now, UTC now. All right. Now we cannot leave it like this because you have the time zone in there. So we have to remove the time zone. And this you can do with date time zone dot remove zone. Okay. So this is the current date time. So instead of custom one, I'm going to rename it to current date time. So now that we have the current date and time, we want to compare that to the date on which we switch to summertime or winter time. Now let's insert another step before a timestamp. And here we can use an if function. So if the current date and time is before the summertime. And to this date, we also need to add the hour. Now here that is at one o'clock. So pound symbol and then time, bracket open. And here, the hour, minute, and seconds. Now we want to check if the current date and time is before the summertime or after. So let's write an or statement. And then we need to check if the current date time is after the winter time. And also here, how we can use exactly the same. So let's copy that over. Well, if this is true, we are in winter time. So that means then we want to return, well, a one. And else we want to return a two. Now at the moment we are in winter time, so therefore it returns a one. Okay, so now let's rename this step because this is basically our time shift from UTC. Okay, then we go back to the timestamp and here instead of the plus one, now here we have the time shift, time shift from UTC. Now to check if our timestamp still works in the summertime, I just go back to the query, current date and time, and I'm going to comment out what we have there, the actual date and time. And I'm just going to put any date in summertime. All right. So here that's the 1st of June at one o'clock. Okay. So now that we updated the current date and time to some date in summer, we go over here to time shift and you see the one changed into a two. So that number then flows into our timestamp over here in the switch zone function. And that's why it still works. And when it's then winter time, it goes and adjusts it to one again. 
Now, this is how you can build the ultimate timestamp for your last refresh. Now, of course, keep in mind that this query, well, needs to be refreshed when you refresh all of the other ones. Otherwise, well, the timestamp would be still outdated. Now, I hope it was helpful and that you learned some new techniques. And if you have any questions, then post them in the comment section below. And I hope to see you in the next video.